Monkeypox has now been detected in three more countries, bringing the total to 15, as scientists say they are still unsure uh, what is causing the outbreak. Australia, Israel and Switzerland are the latest to report a presence of the virus. Well, these cases come as Britain's Health Security Agency has said higher risk contacts of people with monkeypox should self-isolate for three weeks, as Mark Lobel reports. It's still unclear why we're witnessing this unusual spread of monkeypox, as more patients emerge with the common symptoms of a bumpy rash, fever, sore muscles and a headache. But it is something that everybody should be concerned about. We're working on it hard to figure out what we do and what uh, vaccine, if any, may be available for it. But it is a concern in the sense that if it were to spread, it's consequential. Austria has joined Israel and Switzerland in confirming cases of monkeypox there, bringing the total number of nations reporting outbreaks to 15. So how dangerous is the virus strain detected in Austria? Actually, it's not very dangerous. We know from Great Britain that it is probably the West African strain, and that is not very dangerous. The death rate is around 1%, but usually we have mild cases. However, the UK Health Security Agency warns severe illness can occur. There are certain individuals who are much more at risk of severe disease, particularly immunosuppressed individuals or young children. It can take around 12 days to show symptoms, and patients are advised to isolate until their scabs have fallen off. Belgium has become the first country to introduce a compulsory 21-day quarantine for monkeypox patients. Contract tracers in the UK are going one step further, advising people who have had direct unprotected contact with a case to self-isolate for 21 days too. What I think will happen is, yet there will be more spread, but it will be slow. And what you'll start to see is that outbreak starting to to kind of ebb away as more and more people become aware that monkeypox is spreading, that they they seek treatment, and we start to deploy the smallpox vaccine to do what's called ring vaccination, to to vaccinate all the contacts in a ring around the, the cases so that we stop the spread. Past outbreaks have been stopped in their tracks, like in the US in 2003. But the outbreak of this strain amidst a global pandemic and the emergence of monkeypox in countries where it doesn't normally appear adds to the concern. Mark Lobel, BBC News. Uh, let's speak now to Dr. Helen uh, Vimilaratna, uh, who's an expert on infectious diseases at the University of Birmingham. Uh, Dr. Helen, thank you for being with us. Um, and the message quite clearly in that package as well is that there is nothing to panic about, but people need to be aware, they need to be conscious, and they need to seek help if they are concerned. Um, talk to me about where this may have come from and how we are seeing so many cases. Yeah, so it's really unusual, obviously, to see a cluster of cases like this. It seems like it was probably imported from an individual who travelled to West Africa. It seems genetically like it's the West African uh, strain that's circulating. Um, So now it's circulating within particular pockets and subpopulations, predominantly in urban areas, which is different from the natural epidemiology that's seen in West Africa, where it is more confined, more usually, to rural areas. And the interesting thing about monkeypox is that we, although we know a lot about the biology of the virus, we don't necessarily fully understand the epidemiology of it. So it's likely to be um, usually confined to animal populations and then to spill over into human populations. But we don't know what the animal reservoir is. But we know that human to human um, transmission is not usually the most important method of transmission. Yeah, so um, talk to me, and sorry to interrupt, talk to me a little bit about that transmission. How is it being transmitted and how can people uh, you know, uh, pr- prevent that transmission if possible? Yeah, so it's transmitted by really close contact, usually with bodily fluids. Um, so that would be the sort of contact that you might have with um, somebody that is dependent on you for care or with a close partner. So we're talking about really close and household contacts. We're not talking about casually walking past somebody in the street or sitting next to somebody on a bus. So I think that we should definitely have a message that nobody should be overly alarmed and nobody should be panicking. Obviously good hygiene is important, um, but contact tracing is going to be really important. And it would be nice if we learn very much from the lessons of COVID 
and put into place really good early contact tracing. Uh, we talk about following up two rings um, of contacts around the cases that are identified and then to offer vaccination where appropriate and monitoring and isolation. And I think that if this is practiced really well, it would be great if this is kind of a, a textbook example case going forwards for when we have inevitably we will have similar outbreaks in the future. Yeah, it's interesting to draw those parallels with COVID, although, as you point out, uh, there is nothing like the risk associated with COVID. But nonetheless, we've learned a lot, haven't we, about uh, contact tracing, isolation. So the UK and Belgium now recommending a three week isolation period to try and put a lid on this. Uh, and also clearly vaccines as well. Talk to me about what vaccines are available if anyone uh, is concerned that they may be uh, suffering from this. Yeah, so there is one vaccine which is licensed by the um, European Medical Association, which um, has been licensed, approved for use for um, for monkeypox. And it's actually originally developed as a smallpox vaccine, but it's approximately 85% effective at preventing smallpox, uh, at, excuse me, at preventing monkeypox. Um, so that is a highly effective vaccine, and that could be appropriate for people who've had particularly close contact, and in particular those who might have underlying health conditions which compromise their, their natural immunity. Um, thank you for being so clear on that. It's really important, isn't it? Uh, Dr. Helen Vimilaratna, I pronounced it right this time. Thank you. Who's an expert on infectious diseases at the University of Buckingham. Thanks so much.